Now let's see how do these average revenue and marginal revenue look on a graph. Let's try to derive them. You can see both of them start off from the same point. This would be the point from where they would be starting. And you can see that the average revenue is going on falling. It is going on falling. If you remember in perfect competition, the average revenue was same. It was constant at all the levels. It was same for whatever number of units that was sold by the firm. But in the case of monopoly, the average revenue keeps on falling at each level. So the firm, the curve will be downward sloping. Same would be the case for marginal revenue. It is falling at all levels. But you can see that it is falling at a higher rate. It was nine and a half when one unit was sold. It's eight and a half when the second unit is sold. However, at that level, you can see the average revenue is nine. Again, it is seven and a half when three units are sold. At the same time, you can see that average revenue is eight and a half. So we know that the marginal revenue curve is falling at a higher rate. So it will be a curve which is inside the average revenue curve. It will be inside because it is falling at a higher rate. It starts off from the same point but keeps on falling like average revenue curve. It not only falls like average revenue curve but it falls at a higher pace, higher rate, increasing rate than the average revenue curve. So it will be a curve which will be inside the average revenue curve. So this is how both the curves look. This is how we derive the average revenue curve and the marginal revenue curves. It is important to note that our average revenue curve is the demand curve in the case of monopoly because this is how much the consumers are demanding when the price is nine and a half the average revenue curve is nine and a half when the price is nine the average revenue is nine when the price is eight and a half the average revenue is eight and a half, so on and so forth. So we can see that this brings up my demand curve as well. So my average revenue curve is my demand curve and MR curve and average revenue curve are both downward sloping. The slope is negative. They both are downward sloping. Just that MR curve is inside the AR curve because it falls at a higher rate. Now let's understand the relation between the two. As we've discussed, both are downward sloping. MR cuts the horizontal line between Y axis and AR into two equal parts. The curve MR, you can see, is cutting the x-axis. This horizontal line is nothing but x-axis. So the MR curve is bisecting as I should be using the word. It is bisecting the distance, the difference between the origin and the AR where AR is touching the x-axis. AR is touching the x-axis at this point. Let me denote this point as A. And MR is touching the x-axis at this point. 
so let me denote this point as b so this means mr is bisecting the segment oa thus we can say ob will be equal to ba both these parts will be of the same length so we can say mr is cutting the x axis such that ob and ba will be equal where ar is cutting the x axis and where mr is cutting the x axis the portion will be equal to the difference between the origin and the point where mr is cutting the x axis in short both these segments ob and ba will be equal the third condition is ar cannot be zero but mr can be zero and can be negative as well look average revenue cannot be zero because you are starting off from the average revenue zero when the price was rupees 10 if you remember the average revenue was zero so now you have decreased the price to increase the sales now your sales is going on increasing as you are decreasing the price so as you are going on decreasing the price number of units sold is going on increasing finally we saw that in the last case where the price was 4 and a half 11 units were sold thus the total revenue was 49 and a half wherein just a case above it where 10 units were sold we saw that the total revenue was 50 rupees at the price of 5 now we see that the total revenue has started to fall and thus because of a fall in total revenue average revenue will also be falling now but it will never become zero because total revenue will never become zero why because if total revenue again becomes zero you will not sell the product you started from a total revenue of zero and you end up at a total revenue of zero again so what is the use of all the activity that you've done and where did the revenue from all the units go so total revenue cannot be zero and thus ar also cannot be zero however mr can be zero we've seen this in the earlier case mr was zero there it was not only zero but it was negative also and thus we can see that it extends beyond the x axis it starts from the y axis it cuts the x axis that is it becomes zero and then extends beyond the x axis that is it becomes negative so mr can be zero or negative as well